Hello, my name is Jay Leslie, and I'm happy to be the one to demonstrate the capabilities of OnePager Pro and Express for you today. So what is OnePager and what is it for? To answer that in a way that makes the most sense, I'm going to tell the story of how I personally came to find OnePager. Prior to coming to work here, I was actually a project manager by trade for about 14 years. Now, this was something I used to do quite a lot dragging shapes around in PowerPoint or Visio to create reports even though I already had a very robust project built in Microsoft Project. Why? Because I couldn't get what I needed any other way. The project and portfolio management applications out there today are not built to create presentation level graphics of our plans. This worked and I actually got very good at it, but the problem is it's just way too inefficient and it never occurred to me that someone may have developed some software to generate these visuals for me using the data I already had. One pager allowed that, to take the data I had in Microsoft Project or Excel and turn that into the reports I needed. It was a significant time saver, it empowered me as a competent communicator, and not to mention saved my company money and added a great deal of value to the organization in which I was working. One pager is not an all-encompassing planning tool. We focus on the visual. It's a great addition to any project and portfolio management tool out there, since they can all export to Excel, to help improve the quality and clarity of communications and to make the process of creating those communications as efficient as possible. Okay, on to the demo. I'll cover how One Pager works with both Project and Excel. On my screen, I have a sample file open in Microsoft Project. OnePager works with the latest versions of Project and Excel all the way back to 2003, so you shouldn't have any compatibility issues. It also works with Project Server and Project Online. Once installed, OnePager can be launched either as a standalone application from within your list of applications, as you see here, or as an add-in from within Project or Excel. To locate the add-in launch buttons, click on your add-ins tab. Your source project or Excel file, at a minimum, should include a task name, a start date, and a finish date. But you can also use any other columns that you may have populated. For example, you may have a column to track resource names, a column to capture status values, or maybe regional values. All of this data can be used for display or to drive automated grouping and formatting in one pager. If you want to be choosy about the tasks and milestones you're pulling into your visual, the easiest way is to add a column with yes values to your document. In Excel, this is just a column with yes values. In Project, this is a flag column. You can add a flag column by right-clicking into any column header, selecting Insert Column, then hit your F key. Any flag column will do. Once your flag column is present, put yeses next to the activities and milestones you want in your chart. Keep in mind that you're not limited to just one column of yes values. You can add as many columns to your project or Excel file with different combinations of yeses to create charts that will fulfill the needs of different conversations or presentations that may occur over the lifetime of your initiative. Either way you launch one pager, as an add-in or as a standalone application, this start screen will appear. This form and the following form are meant to walk you through the process of creating a data-driven document using your data from Project or Excel. Clicking New or Open here is like choosing File New or File Open in any other Office application. Update will allow you to send updates you've made to your source file to a one-pager visual you've already produced, and the visual will adjust automatically based on those updates. I'm going to click New here to make a new one-pager document, which we refer to as Project Views. You may hear me say View, Project View, Chart, Visual, One-Pager Document. I use those terms interchangeably throughout the demonstration, and with those terms, I'm speaking of the one-pager visual files themselves. At the top of the next form, which we call the one-pager choices form, the first thing I see is the file that one-pager wants to use to create the project view. Notice that you can actually add multiple documents into this list by clicking Add Remove. So it is possible to easily create a single visual using multiple source files from Project or Excel. Next, I need to select a template. A template tells OnePager how you want your view to appear in terms of formatting and organization. A template in OnePager is like using a template in any other Office application. 
We provide you a base set of templates to get started, but you will eventually make your own templates, which is very easy to do, and I'll cover the ease and importance of making your own templates more as we get further. Now I'm going to give my view a title. This just goes at the top of the document to start, and I can change it later if I want. The task selection section is where I will tell OnePager which flag column I've used as a designator. Notice that I can also leverage a built-in filter to tell OnePager which tasks and milestones I want to use based on criteria in my data. Finally, I must choose a date for my snapshot. A snapshot in OnePager is like a slide in my file, and I can add more snapshots or slides over time and eventually click through those to animate how my project has evolved. In the example here, I'm going to choose today's date and then click Create New Project View. OnePager reads my yes values, combines that data with my template settings, and renders me a new OnePager document and initial snapshot. Let me flip over to Excel and show you how this works there with OnePager Express. Express is not a trimmed down version of OnePager Pro as the name might suggest, it just works with Excel instead. The basic data you need in your source Excel file is also task name, start date, and finish date. A unique ID will help OnePager recognize each activity and milestone during updates, and a column with yes values will allow you to be selective about what you're pulling into your view, similar to the flag column in Project. If you have other columns in your data that you'd like to use in your OnePager file, that is easy to do. When you've got your yes values in place, you can click the OnePager Express button on your Add-ins tab in Excel to launch OnePager. The first two pages are essentially the same between Pro and Express. Click New, select the template you desire, add a title, ensure the column with your yes values is showing in the task selection dropdown, and finally, choose your snapshot date. From here, you will hit Next. This page is where you will confirm certain column mappings for one pager. The three mandatory columns are noted by asterisks at the top. However, our Excel file has other data attributes that we'd like to map in, so we'll keep them in the cells below. In your case, you may need to hit the drop down and make a correction. To do that, just hit those drop downs and make the appropriate selections. When you think you're set, click Create New Project View. Since OnePager Pro and Express essentially have the same features once you're in the editor, we'll continue the demonstration in this example. Now, Chances are that your first results might not look quite as pretty as mine, but that's okay. It's a part of the learning process. It just means that your template wasn't exactly right for your data or that you have a different preference in terms of formatting and styling. Just about everything in the visual is something that you can modify to get what you need prior to your presentation. We're going to circle back on some of the nitty gritty flexibility one pager has to offer, but first we need to complete your understanding of templates and the ability to update your chart. As a new user, you're going to spend some time making changes to the settings in your OnePager chart in order to best accommodate your audience needs and your data. Where to do that initially should be in this magic button here called the Project View Properties. All of these settings in here are global and if modified will have some impact to the underlying chart. How long it takes you to get to know what these settings do depends on two things how often you're in here, and how brave you are as a user. Remember, one pager is read-only, so the worst thing that can happen is you make an ugly chart, or you just can't get one pager to do what you want it to do. And that's something we can help you with, and there's a ton of self-help materials on our support page if you like. You're going to get to the point where you say, ah, now that's how I want my visual to look. When you get to that point, you're going to want to take the settings that are driving the view in front of you and turn them into a template that you can use again. To do that, click the button just to the right of the Project View Properties button that says Copy to Template. It's just like doing a Save As template in any other Office application. A Windows Explorer window will pop, allowing you to save these settings to a new template that you can then employ the next time you make a new one pager. This is really the main gist of our OnePager application in terms of its efficiency. You take a project you already have, you use one of our templates to get you a starting point, you then customize the visuals you've created, and save those customizations back into templates that you can use next time. You will soon build up a library of templates that will allow you to get what you're looking for in any situation in a matter of minutes.
Templates can also help an entire team get up to speed very quickly on the tool. As soon as what I like to call the Van Gogh user arrives, have them save their templates into a shared folder and allow everyone access to those templates. Next thing you know, everyone is just as good as the Van Gogh user. Templates can also allow you and your team to very quickly and easily achieve a certain level of standardization using conditional formatting. Back in the Taskbars and Milestones tab of the Project View Properties, there is a duplicative setting at the bottom that says Manage Rules in the Conditional Formatting section. With dropdowns, it's very easy to quickly build rules in here to tell OnePager how you want your tasks and milestones to appear. For example, I could tell OnePager if you see a value of Phase 1 complete in my task name column, I want you to make this shape appear as a blue star. If I code this rule in, and then save this back to a template that I then share with my team, whenever one pager sees phase one complete, it's going to make that shape a blue star. Nobody has to think about it. Over time, my audience will develop a fluency based on this conditional formatting that allows them to go straight to the data and information rather than having to learn how to read the chart using a legend. To get your visual out of one pager and ready to share, there are a couple different methods. First, you can click on the Copy button at the far left of your Home tab on the Ribbon Toolbar. This will put a high-resolution image on your clipboard that you can then paste with a Control-V into any other document or email. The next method is to save your file as an image, which you can accomplish by clicking File, then Save As. When your Windows Explorer pops, simply select your preferred image file type below the File Name cell in the drop-down and choose the location in your directory where you'd like to store the image. One of the best things about OnePager is that it allows you to set up a visual for a recurring meeting and then simply use the source file to adjust the chart whenever your next iteration of that meeting occurs. There are two standard ways to update your visuals in OnePager and they are by adding a snapshot to a project view or by replacing an existing snapshot. First, let's pretend that we've just presented this visual in front of us to an audience that we'll know we'll have to present to each week for the next several weeks. Now, a week is going to go by and some change is going to be inflicted upon our source file, which is natural. Now that it's a week later, I need to walk into my weekly meeting with an updated visual. First, I'm going to click my one pager button. Then I'm going to click update. Here I can select to make a new snapshot or replace the snapshot I have. We're going to make a new snapshot and we're going to select a date of a week past our previous snapshot. Then click New. OnePager is going to pull in a fresh set of data from MS Project and present me with a new snapshot. If I navigate to my View tab in OnePager, I can see now that I have a blue Previous button illuminated, which if clicked, will allow me to step back from the more recent snapshot to the previous snapshot. And I can see some movement on the screen, which is indicative of the change that has occurred from one week to the next, sort of like a movie or a slideshow. The Insert tab allows you to add content to any or all snapshots, which will allow them to stand a little bit more on their own. Text boxes, images, links to illustrate dependencies, Curtains and comment boxes can all add content if a voiceover explanation isn't an option. Okay, on to the details. Almost all of the visual elements in the chart can be dragged and dropped for the purposes of movement or resizing with a left click and hold. Right clicking will give you a different set of shortcuts or controls in just about every portion of the graph. Swim lane and row heights or vertical location, shape height or vertical location, the actual document height and width, and the legend size and placement are just some of the examples of items that can be modified with drag and drop. There is one main exception with drag and drop, and that is while you can drag one or more shapes up and down in the view, you cannot move them left and right, and that is by design. As mentioned previously, one pager is read only from our source file. So if your dates are off, you have to go back to your source file, make updates there, then ask OnePager for an update. OnePager can never backwards populate anything into your project. It's technically impossible. That gives these visuals more credibility and protects the integrity of your source file. What you see in Project or Excel should always be what you see in OnePager.
The shape formats in your view are modifiable for one, many, or all markers at once. To change the format properties for all of the shapes in your project view, click the Project View Properties button on your Home tab here. This is where all of the automation in OnePager exists. Any change to one of these settings will have some impact on the underlying chart. This form is very easy to learn. With a little messing around in practice, you'll develop a muscle memory for what all of these settings do. To format the shapes, we'll navigate to either the Taskbars or Milestones tabs and modify the settings here. Shape, Fill, Height, Borders, Color, and other decorations can all be modified on this tab. To change formatting of one or more shapes independently of the global shape settings in the Project View Properties, select what you want using left clicks with Control key or using a lasso. When your selections are complete, you can use the formatting options up on your Home tab in the Ribbon Toolbar for things like color and font changes, or you can click the Format button. In the Change Marker Properties dialog box, you have much more detailed control of the formatting of the selected shapes. One pager can group your tasks and milestones into swim lanes using any column of data in your source file. Right now, you can see mine are grouped by my resource names column. Additionally, one pager can display up to five columns from your source file to the right of the swim lane column, like you see here. To change what columns from my source file are driving the display in my swim lanes and other columns, I click into the Project View Properties again, then go to the Rows and Swim Lanes tab. There is a lot of flexibility in this tab, but we're going to look at two settings that you will use most often. This drop-down will allow you to change what column is driving your swim lane grouping. This will control what additional data you want to display in columns to the right of your swim lanes. The checkboxes here will allow you to turn the columns on or off within your project view. If you don't feel like building in conditional formatting rules, one pager can also color your tasks based on different values in one of your source file columns. To modify what column is controlling the coloring of your markers, go to the Taskbars or Milestones tab. There is a setting on the right side that is duplicated on both of those tabs called Gantt Bar slash Milestone Fill Color. You can choose to color everything one color or use a column from your source file. In our example, we're using the status values from our source file. This will also control what you see populated in your legend. But the legend has its own settings that can be accessed with a right click or by opening the Project View Properties form and visiting the Legend tab. In this example, I also have several visual elements in the body of my chart set to display. You see some yellow bars meant to denote percent complete progress visually, red bars meant to illustrate critical path, and also some smaller bars underneath the larger bars, which are indicating the baselines. You have full control over percent complete and critical path in terms of color and height within the taskbar, and even more control over the baselines. You also have the ability to include percent complete text values and baseline dates. All of those items are something that you can turn on and off with a few clicks for the entire view, as well as on an individual or group basis. There are so many more features and settings to explore in OnePager, and we urge you to check them out by visiting our other short videos at www.onepager.com forward slash support. You can also email us at support at onepager.com, and we'll be happy to assist you.